And a very good morning to you. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. Technology and innovation are driving almost every part of our economy. The medical profession has a special need for care that is personal and that utilizes the latest technology. This past week, the University of Pittsburgh hosted a health tech competition called the Pitt Innovation Challenge. Its goal is to encourage the entrepreneurial spirit of Pitt students and faculty by supporting innovative ideas. This year's challenge included using wearable technology to help solve a health problem. Participants competed for $555,000 in awards. Joining us now is Dr. John Mayer, director of the Pitt Innovation Challenge. He's director of research and development in the Department of Family Medicine at the Pitt School of Medicine. Also with us is Dr. Greg Siegel, an associate professor of psychiatry at Pitt's Medical School and director of the program in Cognitive Effective Neuroscience, or PECAN. Hey, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Congratulations to you. Oh, thanks, thanks. for having us. You know, uh, let me start with you, John, if I can. Tell us about this contest. What's this program all about? Well, the Pitt Innovation Challenge is something that we designed at the University of Pittsburgh to help our really talented researchers get their research connected to problems in the real world and get those solutions out to people. What exactly is wearable technology? Well, we have a very broad definition of wearable technology. and In fact, uh, Greg has some here. Uh, it's anything that's with you all the time. And uh, Greg has an example that's both a watch and a backpack version of his technology. Well, was, he, was Greg one of your winners? Uh, Greg was one of our winners in our most recent pinch challenge, yes. Great. Well, Greg Greg, thank you so much again for sharing with us. Tell me about, you have some wearable technology in front of you. What's that all about? We do. So uh, chronic stress, especially post-traumatic stress disorder, is um, an expensive and debilitating problem with long-term health consequences. Right. We don't have any interventions that come on when you need them. This measures your stress tunes to your body and your um, vocal expressions and when you're expressing stress, when you're feeling stress, it comes on and vibrates at frequencies we found reduce stress. It feels like a cat, a customized cat purring on your chest just when you need it. When your stress goes down, it gets out of the way. We it's, have, a, it's a vest. It looks like yeah, a vest. Is that it, what it is? It's a little backpack. Um, we also have a version that's a watch that works pretty well. And you wear this. And you wear it. Now, would you wear it all the time if you were someone subject to stress, or is it something you yeah. could grab at the last minute? Either way. So the watch version, I often will wear all the time. The um, backpack, I'll wear on a day when I really, really need something that interrupts me in my tracks. So are you someone who admits to a lot of stress? I'll admit it right here. <laughs> I'm an academic. <laughs> You're under a lot of stress. <laughs> I'm an academic. We have a lot of stress. So how exactly does it work? I mean, how does it, what is it about your body that it detects stress? Right. So we can sense sweat. We can s sense um, how evenly your heart is beating. And if right. it starts beating super evenly, that's a sign of stress. The other thing we can look at is... You mean beating faster? Actually, this is just, you normally have some chaos between your heartbeats, and when that goes away, that's a sign that you're stressed. All your systems are coordinating to respond to something stressful. Um, the other thing we can look at is vocal parameters. So when you start speaking very quickly, when your voice raises and when you get right. loud, that's a sign you're stressed. You start shouting and yelling and screaming. <laughs> that's a good time that you'd want a cat purring on your chest. Right. <laughs> well, John, I think this is just one example of this wearable technology yeah, that you're focused on. Can you give us some other? Yeah, Greg is one of uh, several examples in our recent competition who got to pitch to a set of judges. And they ranged from uh, something to help uh, amputees get a better gait with their new prosthetic leg to a wearable technology that helped people manage diabetes to a, uh, a hat that was worn by children who were in a coma to monitor brain function. There were a number of really great projects that ranging all over the health span. You know, doctors, this is fascinating to me. I mean, I just think that the fact that we can use technology in ways that will help people that we never even thought of, mm -hmm. and the idea of creating competition so that your students are really getting into this, do you think that's a new mindset with our 21st century students? Well, I think in part with the students and also with our faculty. At the University of Pittsburgh, we have this really talented and capable faculty, and we put this challenge out there to kind of let them free up a little bit and do a little bit of a crazy idea and it lets us bring together the really solid neuroscience I mean the frequencies that this does are based on real science right. but bring them to a problem that real people can use and so it's a it's a way to mesh the real talent we have at Pitt with real problems in the world 
Greg, you work with students, I presume, and uh, are they interested in this kind of work? Yeah, we have a great group of MD, PhD students and MDs, um, and actually undergraduates as well, who are working on this project. And actually, one of um, our students, together with a business partner, have spun off a company oh, really? to commercialize this. It's called Neural Impact. We have the website per.life, P-U-R-R-R.life. We'll get so, it up there. It's on the screen now. Awesome. <laughs> And um, it's actually a company to commercialize this, and that was based out of the pinch competition. So last year, um, in the first pinch competition, we won um, one of the smaller prizes that let us do a study to say this is a valid kind of intervention. It improves people's performance and decreases stress and changes the body in the ways right. we want to. Submitted it for publication, and now um, we've got a company what? based on this competition. Well, you anticipated my last question, which was how do we get this to the marketplace so yeah. that people like me and many others who are subjected to stress or other kinds of, mm -hmm. of ailments and injuries, how do we actually get this? Because I take, it's a, it takes a while to get these approvals through the it, Food and Drug Administration. It, it takes a, a while to get them through the Food and Drug Administration. This is one that doesn't necessarily need to go through that. But the bigger issue, and our focus uh, in uh, the Clinical Translational Science Institute is getting the science translated out to people and so a lot of that is getting you know investigators like Greg to think about that and start imagining a pathway for uh, the idea you know he said we did a study right. last year and now we're thinking about how to enter the market and the market is where people interact with the technology and we're just really excited to get folks writing great papers but also doing things that people can use well gentlemen I'm really excited that you came on the show today to tell us about this I thank you both and hey, congratulations you so again for all the work you're doing and I know we'll have you back next year to yep. tell us on the latest oh, there's way be to reduce stuff. my stress <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated when the Sunday business page continues how a million dollar grant from the Richard King Mellon Foundation will be used to help advance scientific discoveries in women's health Michael